Hello and welcome to my twin flame journey. I am Shine and this is going to be, <clears throat> sorry, the May reading for Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. And be sure to check your Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus to get additional messages. Also keep in mind that these readings are general. So take what resonates and leave the rest. If you'd like a personal reading, all the information is below. Um, also, be sure to check out the Satsang Saturday topic, you know, for this upcoming week for Saturday, April 28th. Um, if you'd like to submit a question based on what Spirit has suggested that we talk about, you can leave that question in the comment section of that video. And please be sure to do that by Thursday, 5 p.m. Pacific time, because I will be recording it Friday and uploading it Friday for, for Saturday. Um, so I like to give myself a little time to meditate on the question at hand, etc, etc. So be sure to check that video out. Um, what else was I going to say? Darn. Ah, oh, the brain isn't what it used to be. Huh? Age. <laughs> like walking in a room and you're like, why did I come in here? Um, oh yes, and, and also understand that when I'm deciphering these messages, again, I might be talking about actions that you're initiating or another person that you might be involved with. So again, uh, flip it around, apply it as need be. Um, but don't force something to resonate, obviously, if it doesn't. Now, what we have is what you're going to be dealing with for the month. Um, Spirit's advice in regards to it, why it's happening, what you're thinking and feeling about it, what are any challenges or obstacles or things that you need to be aware of to address in order to have a positive outcome in this situation. What is the higher message involved? This is the things that you might not be aware of, which is the, the bigger picture, so to speak. Um, and then we have advice. And of course, we're going to clarify with the Sibelis as we go along, if need be. So let us look at our first thing. We have clean it up. Let us see what's clean it up. Essential meanings, getting to the core of a situation, freedom from a burden, cleaning house, sweeping away what is no longer needed. Oracle message, ever feel so bogged down with the emotional gunk that you can't think straight? Could you be surrounded by physical clutter in your home? Also, too much work, overwhelmed, time to clean house. Every item out of place, natters away at you. Every unresolved resentment, every comparison to others that leads to a sense of lack takes up energetic space. Every unpaid bill just adds up to an unnecessary feeling of being overwhelmed. Now is the time to free yourself by energetically cleaning house. Just do it. Make room for the miracles that are lining up for you. Relationship message, time to clear the air. Take a look at your side of the street and say what's on your mind. Sweep away the old stuff so that a spring breeze can flow through with new energy. It's the perfect time to do an inventory of your dynamics and see what's yours and what's not yours. To clean up the relationship. Everyone brings some baggage. Sort through what you brought with you and let go of what is no longer needed. Become unencumbered and your relationship will flourish. Prosperity message, simple things like opening your mail, paying bills, sorting out your timetable, time making lists, and getting organized. Organi <laughs> okay, getting organized is what this symbol means when it comes to your work. Make time for yourself, too. This card is a sign you may be overburdened and overwhelmed. It's okay to say no, you'll prosper even more if you do protection message, is it possible you may be focusing too much on other people right now, trying too hard to be helpful? Does taking on what belongs to others make you feel needed or desired? Perhaps you think it's your calling to relieve people of their burdens, but what is it? But what is the cost to you and to them? 
Don't clean up someone else's side of the street. You're not helping by freeing them or her of responsibility. You're also not doing yourself any favors, and you just might be adding an even greater strain. You are loved as you are. You don't need to be needed to be loved. This, of course, is, a, is speaking on like codependent tendencies, trying to be the healer, trying to be the saver, trying to, you know, keep the peace. Again, and th there's a difference between, you know, being supportive of someone and enabling and if we're dealing with karmic relationships, karmic soulmates, you guys are brought together because as both of you have something within you that needs to be realized. Tendencies, behavior patterns, conditioning, wounding, whatever it is that needs to be brought to the surface. And if you're a people pleaser, if you're jumping through hoops trying to prove your worthiness, prove your love, if you're trying to take on someone else's karma, their baggage, their responsibilities in life, all that stuff, that is a codependent trait, one one side of a codependent trait and that needs to not happen allow people to learn and grow on their own putting in their own efforts again you can be a support but not an enabler let people clean up their own messes um in their life in their karma whatever it is because that it will initiate their heat healing it won't hinder it and it also won't hinder your growth because again you're participating in karma um, your own and theirs now if we're talking about you know people who are looking to reconcile with people um, it's about accountability recognizing again what's mine <clears throat> I'm sorry what's mine and what's yours it takes two to tango both people bring in certain baggage bring in certain karma bring in certain conditioning wounding whatever it is and this creates the dynamic in the relationship and if it's dealing with karmic situations it's usually an unhealthy dynamic it starts out great in the beginning but over time things start surfacing that have been hidden that tend to surface every relationship that you have again it's repeated cycles same situations pretty much you're appearing the same way in each situation it always ends the same again but it's just with different people this is karma this is us having a look at ourselves what's the common denominator in all of my situations well it's me what is it that I'm doing what is it that I need to look at about myself? What behavior patterns have I been engaging in that have been self-sabotaging, that have, you know, ruined relationships, that have, you know, affected my, my career, whatever it is. Um, again, it's about recognizing what is ours and holding ourselves accountable for our own choices, our own actions, our own behaviors, and not trying to sweep things under the rug, not trying to downplay our role in things not trying to lie to cover up lies you know again avoiding accountability because it, it makes it so that we don't have to look at ourselves and a lot of times we don't want to look at ourselves especially if we're deceptive especially if we treat people as means to an end especially if you know again the way that we are is ruining our lives for us basically so it's again checks and balances looking in the mirror, cleaning out the closet, getting rid of those behavior patterns, those things that are holding us back, that are no longer serving us, that are part of our karma. It's time to heal that, address that, and transcend it so that we can become better, our lives can become better, our relationships can become better. It's time to, time to clean it up. You know what I'm saying? Because when we refuse to do that, we just find ourselves in the same situations over and over and over. And you can't blame outside stuff. You are responsible for you. We are grown-ups now. You know, we are accountable for our own deeds. And it's about recognizing that and, again, cleaning it up. Now, what we have, because this is the advice in regards to this, and this is what you're going to be dealing with, we have the Nine of Wands. And I said, why the Nine of Wands? And we have strength. And here comes the truck. And then we have the Three of Wands. And I said, why the Three of Wands? And then we have the Magician, but in the reverse. Oof. 
And then we have the Ten of Cups. Why do we have the Ten of Cups? We have the Page of Pentacles. I'm sorry, I'm not even holding that good. Page of Pentacles in the reverse. So let us dive in to what is the dilemma of Scorpio. Um, of course, Nine of Wands. It's close to completion of something. Um, ten is the completion. Nine of Wands, it's like feeling beaten and battle weary. But you got one more fight left in you. And again, in this in this last attempt, this last go around, this last push is what will get you to the ten. And that will help you release the karma, the past. Again, what no longer serves us, you know, by by putting in that that effort, um, you know, the final defense. It's having fought the good fight, or needing to. <laughs> um, feeling drained, exhausted, but knowing that. You gotta, you gotta make a move. You gotta do something to change your situation. Um, it's the final challenge again to reach victory. So it's obviously needing to get out of our fears about whatever it is that we're gonna have to do because it's gotta be done anyway. Um, it's to stand up for your beliefs. You know, standing firm. It's a sign to not give up. It's a sign of hope, encouragement, the last bit of dark before the dawn. It's asking you to draw upon your courage, your resilience, your vigilance, and your patience. Um, you may feel distrustful of others or the self, and it's asking you to try to be optimistic, you know, but take precautions. Be on guard, but not in, in, in a way that's, you know, going to backfire. Now, if we're talking about being guarded and being defensive um, and accountability, perhaps in the past, you know, again, the ego always wants to defend the ego, even if it's aspects of the ego that aren't good for us. It's what we have known. It's what we've been conditioned with. It's, you know, you know how hard it is to break a habit, to break a pattern, especially if you're not even realizing that it's a habit or a pattern that needs to be broken. Um, if we've always looked outside for blame instead of ourselves. So this is saying to me that, you know, perhaps in the past, these defense mechanisms that you used, again, which stems from childhood, what love looked like to you as a child, you know, if you, if you tend to push love away because you're afraid that ultimately it'll fail, you know, whatever, whatever techniques that you've used, again, or, or trying to hide behind a facade um, that you project to the world, to yourself even, lies that we tell ourselves, again, to justify our actions. Well, I had to do it because of whatever. It's, again, needing to... See that 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 no longer that doesn't work. And if you were engaging again in these kind of defense mechanisms, when and if you know in the relationship since you've been separated, you know maybe this person's been trying to talk to you, trying to get you to discuss your role, their role, how to fix things or whatever. But you you know resorted to these tactics that worked in the past, worked in a way where you got the person to kind of let's say get off your case, but it's like you drew so many circles around them that they just kind of let you still enabled you in, in your stuff. Um, and, and perhaps those tactics didn't work anymore because again, when somebody, when these relationships happen, somebody wakes up. And this causes a separation. And the two people are supposed to do the work 
on themselves, come into their aha moments, their epiphanies, you know, seeing the bigger picture, you know, again, takes two to tango. You can't just point the finger at somebody else. You know, that person wasn't then partaking in those games anymore. And perhaps they cut off, cut you off. Um, and you're now realizing that you got to be different. You got to change. You got to grow. You can't resort to those tactics anymore. You know, but it's, 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 there's a lot of fear, you know, this is a fear, kind of fear card, um, fear of change, fear of accountability, fear of the unknown, but knowing that something's got to change, something's got to give, we have to become better, we have to become different in how we deal with our life, our relationships, um, and again, trying to have the courage to push yourself through this rebirth, really. And the Three of Wands, it's about being committed to your future, future planning, um, and being aware that there might be challenges. That's why you're like this, like, oh, what I'm going to have to do in order to do a complete overhaul. Again, to try to get from point A to point C, we got to deal with point B. And whatever that entails, it might seem daunting, it might seem scary, you know, but it, it needs to be done because we need to expand ourselves. Um, we need to move forward to make progress within ourselves. Um, this is also a travel card. So some people might need to leave where they are and travel to where they want to be. Um, again, it, it's looking at the long term, what we want in the long term and, and being willing to put in the effort for that to attain the Ten of Cups here. You know, it's about being bold, taking leaps of faith, developing who you are as a person, you know, having vision, foresight, looking for greater possibilities than, than the one that you're currently finding yourself in. Um, and then, of course, the Ten of Cups, it's all about happiness, abundance, family life. You got the couple here, you got the kids dancing around, you got the rainbow. This is like fulfillment, emotional fulfillment. This is what we want. You know, and perhaps we were in a situation that ended up backfiring on us because we entered into something more for needs or wounds or, you know, having voids filled, whatever it is, and it wasn't emotionally fulfilling. It was just providing the material aspects and we found ourselves unhappy in that and maybe we're looking to leave that situation because we want something that's more emotionally fulfilling we want the ten of cups it's united by bonds of true everlasting love they have each other and all they could ever wish for um, it's the free flow of feelings again not being afraid of love Perhaps that was your defense mechanism, always pushing it away or always entering into situations where you're there, but you're not investing really um, as a protection for yourself. So this way I don't get too hurt if I'm just in it for what I can get out of it, not really for any emotional fulfillment. Um, it's looking to have the achievement of perfect love it's a highly spiritual omen as well it's it's blessings stability the comforts of home abundance um now it's about relationships family joy dreams wishes love good fortune accomplishments you know be, being grateful for when we have that it's about having peace it's about family celebrations and also reunions it's the beginning of new love, satisfaction of a long-term commitment, love that's built over time with effort. 
you know, no, we got to put in that effort if we want to attain this Ten of Cups. It's following your heart and intuition. It's what we value. Becoming inspired. It's happiness, fulfillment, and it's trust. Now, I don't know if we're needing to gain back someone's trust. Um, and again, I speak to you because this is your reading. You could flip it. It could be the other person um, involved in the situation too. Again, keep that in mind. But I feel that this is more you. That's knowing knowing now what you want, and and realizing that in order to get that, it's going to take some effort. It's going to take some cleaning up. It's going to push you into your destiny. It's going to help you to, again, let go of the facades, let go of the mask, let go of the defense mechanisms, let go of the wounding, let go again. It's about looking within and seeing what about me needs to be healed and changed so that I don't keep finding myself in unhappy situations. You know, reaching that point where you just, you just, you're tired of it. <laughs> you know, you, you want, you want this. You know, and you're here again, you're thinking long term. What do I want long term? Who do I want to be with long term? Oh, and what do I got to do to get that? But know that whatever it is, it's worth the effort because you are worth the effort. This is showing yourself self-love by being able to do the self-reflecting by being able to hold yourself accountable by standing in integrity and truth and becoming an honest person a person who actually invests in themselves is more of an equal partner in relationships you know equal give and take not one person doing all the giving one person doing all the taking it's like being a co-creator with the universe in regards to your life not sitting around letting life happen to you, but instead making moves to change things. You know, nothing's going to change unless you change. And this is what either they're recommending to you or this is what you're feeling. And then we have, again, the strength card, which deals, you know, the strength usually, if you haven't attained the beast, then somewhere the devil was lurking. So there might, again, might have been codependency issues, um, being stuck in, again, in toxic karmic cycles, you know, finding ourselves in the same situations over and over. But again, the common denominator is us. We are attracting these things. We're choosing these partners. We're choosing these situations and finding ourselves in the same stuff over and over again. Again, because you haven't dealt with yourself. You know, and it's having the strength and courage to tame that part of ourselves that tends to lead us astray, that holds us back. Again, that devil energy. So this is about needing to have the strength, the courage, the will, the determination to invest in yourself and in your future. It's also the soulmate card. You know, it's our passions and desires. It is going with the flow of life. It's a sign of Leo. So I don't know if you're dealing with a Leo or you have Leo in your chart. You don't have to, but I'm just saying it's a sign of Leo. It's about, again, determination, persistence, patience, composure, maturity. Again, learning from the past, growing from the past, and applying those lessons in the present so that you can have a better future. Cleaning it up. It's about having compassion. Again, even compassion for ourselves. Because it, it takes pain, it takes these cycles, it takes experience in order for us to hopefully get it someday. And, and come into our realizations. And we can't, you know, sit in the woes, shoulda, woulda, couldas, the regrets, and start with the negative self-talk. You know, it's about even having compassion for yourself because you didn't realize or 
you know, and now you know better. And it's also having compassion for whoever you were dealing with, you know, what you perhaps put them through. It's about being able to again see both sides, both perspectives in regards to whatever transpired here. It's about transcending into spiritual wisdom or, or the emotions that need to be transcended, I'm sorry, into spiritual wisdom. So again, getting those aha moments, those realizations that are going to help you to evolve, to grow, to shed karma. It's a need to let go of the ego. Again, because the ego plays a big part in either pushing us forward or holding us back. It depends on what, what part you're using, the positive or the negative aspects. It's about taking responsibility for the self, mastering oneself, finding balance within. It's about hope, courage, and reward, being rewarded for our efforts. Because obviously, if you invest in your own growth, you will be rewarded because your life will get better. You'll become happier. You'll have better relationships. So again, no matter what you're dealing with, it always comes back down to you. This is your journey. And you're in life school. You come here to learn lessons, to shed karma. And soulmates come into your life to help assist you in that process. It may take you to go through a few of them before you kind of come to that understanding, that realization about what is it about me that needs to change. It has nothing to do with these people because we are responsible for ourselves. We chose that partner. We chose to stay in that situation, which it all comes down to our own choices. And we make those choices based on our conditioning, our wounding, our karma. And we will continue to make the same wrong choices until we address that and realize that it is us that needs to change. And that's showing self-love. That's showing self-respect. It's showing good character. Again, integrity. It all comes down to you and loving yourself. And then everything outside of you will reflect that. So if you're always in chaos, if you're always in whatever, then there's something within that is, is drawing that to you or playing a part. Indeed. Now, the magician in the reverse. Well, on the negative aspect, it's someone who's highly manipulative. So I don't know if you have a tendency to be this way. Um, or perhaps you're dealing with someone who was this way. It's also, you know, poor planning. We have the three of wands here. Maybe we weren't thinking long term, you know, what the consequences of our choices and our actions, what they, how they were going to affect us or our other relationships in the long term. So there was poor planning. Um, it's about greed, deceit, manipulation, trickery, someone who's cunning. It's mental confusion untrustworthiness yeah I put here used car salesman you know somebody again who perhaps uses manipulation to get what they want entering into relationships again to have needs met and voids filled but it's not really about love it's about pacifying those wounds because we're a wreck <laughs> so again we use you know I don't or again this is someone that you were dealing with who uses, you know, emotional manipulation, lies a lot to cover their lies again so that they go undetected with all their shady, shady stuff that they're doing. Um, it's also someone who could be, you know, again, behaving in a way that's kind of narcissistic, um, self-serving, only cares about their own, need, getting their own needs met. And usually looking to have those needs met by outside things, riding on the backs of other people's stuff. Again, entering into relationships where, where the, the person already has the apartment or someone who can pay our way, again, without 
taking responsibility for ourselves and kind of just floating through life. And this is narcissistic traits who are also codependents because they're dependent on they're dependent on other people to feed their ego, make them feel good about themselves, or again provide benefits. But there's no real love there. Um, could someone have behaved that way? due to their childhood wounding and not be a full-blown narcissist? Maybe. Maybe just the wounding went really deep and they just embodied those traits again as defense mechanisms, but narcissists also have it as a defense mechanism, but these people will never change. That wounding was so great that they are permanently damaged, I would say, psychologically, where they cannot help but behave the way that they do. So if you were dealing with somebody like that, like I says, I don't know your situation. And I always tell everybody, know what you're dealing with. Look into things. And if you're a person who's behaved that way, again, do some research. Maybe that is your aha moment. Maybe that is the answer to your why this and why that. Because again, it's got to be something within us that's it's creating the life that we're living. Um, and a lot of people that suffer with narcissistic personality disorder, they don't even know that they have that. And they don't think that there's anything wrong with them. Again, because their view is a skew of the world, of people, of whatever. So they can't see, you know. Some do. I mean, not to say that they don't know when they're lying. They don't know when they're being deceptive because they do. <laughs> they're perfectly aware of what they're doing. But again, it's like second nature. It's just instinct. Um, so again, know what you're dealing with, if you're dealing with somebody like that, or if you've been that way, you know, now perhaps you're having to leave a situation because you were found out, who, who knows, um, or maybe you're trying to, again, you're reflecting on your behavior and, and having like some, some regrets now, understanding that there are things about you, ways that you were that maybe need to change and that you feel bad about now because again, you're realizing things. So you're taming the beast, you know, and, and you're looking to put in the effort, even though it seems daunting and exhausting because you know what you want now. You want to become a better person. You want to go towards the Ten of Cups. You know, you're thinking about what you're going to do long term for your life, what direction you want to go. This also is speaking of uh, and feeling like you don't have what it takes to manifest, not having all the tools that you need, you know, whether it be financial or, again, the courage to do what you got to do. It's, again, it could be you holding yourself back, being confused, not knowing, again, what, what, what the clear plan can be, um, where, where to focus my energy what are my objectives? How do I want others to perceive me? Um, it's skills and talents that are not being utilized. So again, maybe you've been slacking in regards to your career. Or again, because this is a reflection of, of a lack of self-love. You know, when we don't feel I'm not good enough or I'll never do it again. That negative self-talk that stems from childhood wounding. You know, and it's, it's a need to... Think better about yourself. Have that courage. Invest in yourself because it's worth it. It's your life. Um, get out of that victim mode mentality. It's a skill to help you on your spiritual journey that's not being used. So again, you got a tool in the, in the, in the box somewhere that will help you get out of your, your current circumstances. It's just figuring out what that is. And a lot of that, again, stems from just belief. Believing in ourselves, not letting fear dictate our life, fear of the unknown, fear of taking off masks and revealing how we really feel or how we've really behaved, whatever it is, it's, it's trying to find some kind of freedom within yourself to embark on, the, on a new phase of, the, of your life that's going to hopefully bring you better than what you've left behind or what you've experienced so far. And then 
page of Pentacles. In the upright, it talks about, you know, financial opportunities, new jobs, offers coming in, manifesting something in the earthly realm, something that's tangible. Um, but in the reverse, it's a lack of progress and planning. It's, you know, short-term focus. It's blocks that are in the way of achieving one's goals. So perhaps you feel somewhat blocked, again, unable to manifest what you want. Perhaps it's to leave, again, your current place. You need to travel. Maybe you need money. Maybe it's, you know, you're unsure if you can get back together with someone, you know, perhaps because they're no longer offering anything. You know, the runner and the chaser kind of thing. Perhaps whoever you were dealing with in the past, if you're wanting to go back to someone from the past, maybe they gave up on you because of your behavior. And they felt like it was a no-win situation and they just decided to move on. So perhaps you're kind of coming into that awareness too that this person isn't coming after me anymore. This person isn't making any more offers and it has a lot to do with, well, how I engage with them both in the relationship and since we've been apart, maybe. Um, and maybe those offers aren't coming in anymore. And now you're kind of realizing that and you're trying to gain the strength and courage perhaps to make your own offer. And we're learning to get out of our own way. Again, trying to gather up the courage to hold ourselves accountable, to have those talks that we need to have, to reveal the truths that we've been hiding about ourselves, about our feelings, whatever it is. It's a, a loss of faith in our talents and abilities, um, a need for review, a need for recommitment. It's not, again, not having planned right. So I think that some people are regretting their choices and wishing that they choose chose something else, perhaps the person that they left. Um, you know, and perhaps, again, they're unsure if any offer will be accepted at this point, even though this is what they want. That they want this happy home, but there might be some worry in, in, in regards to if they'll be able to manifest it. Now, look at that, half an hour, and we only just did this. We got... <laughs> But I hope it's informative for you. Again, I don't put a time frame on stuff. And when I ask the question, whatever cards come out, I generally take. So that's the reason why it's so in-depth. I could just take one card for each and give you a bare bones reading. And, you know, But I try to give you as much insight as I can. Um, we have the lovers. This is the why of this. So obviously, it's about a relationship or needing to make a decision in regards to a relationship, you know, wanting that Ten of Cups. We have the lady. So this is either you trying to use your intuition to decide on, on, on what, you, what you want to do, how you're going to go about doing it, or this is the person that you're looking to make a decision about. Um, the lady is symbolizes somebody who is like the epitome of woman. She, she's she's everything. She's intuitive. She's loving and caring and smart and perhaps, you know, does her own. Got a career going. She's everything you want in a woman or would like to be. be. And then we have the dark-haired woman. This is somebody who's obviously in their shadow self. Shadow self deals with all the, the, the negative, whether it's us feeling this way, anger, hurt, resentment, anxiety, fear, worry, um, bitterness, depression. You know, again, it's all the negative aspects, anger. Um, so either this is you, again, feeling all kinds of jacked up, try, trying to, you know, make a decision, you know, or perhaps still, still healing from the situation. Maybe you were dealing with somebody who was like that. Um, trying to use your intuition in regards to, you know, choices, directions that you want to make. Or this is the person that you're dealing with. Maybe you are behaving this way and this has caused this person to feel this way in regards to you. And, you know, the lady and the dark-haired woman could be the same person or 
Some of you might be needing to, de to decide between two people. We have the three of wands. You know, one wand can be one person, one wand can be another, and one can be just oh solo mio, heading in a completely different direction. You know, it could be about choosing three different paths, singlehood, this relationship or that relationship. You know, it could be knowing that if we end a situation, we're going to be met with this, you know, because we want to go towards this other person. Or again, it, it could be one and the same person. It's the person that you want, but they're not too happy with you because we have storm here. So it's wanting to weather the storm, wanting to get through whatever difficulties that might have occurred or might still be existing in regards to this situation. And then we have forgiveness. Somebody's looking for forgiveness. Um, or this is about us if we're willing, if we're able to forgive. And then we have growth, fair gray haired man, and judgment. So, judgment again is the wake up call. It's the aha moment. It's wanting to make good judgment. It's perhaps regretting bad judgments. And fair gray haired man could either be you or the person you're dealing with. This is somebody who's in their 40s and up, or this is someone who, again, who's matured. Again, we have growth here. So, learning lessons going through what we've gone through perhaps now we're looking for forgiveness because we've grown we've learned you know we we understand we made poor choices in the past we're trying to make better choices for the future again making making a decision on what direction to go how to go about reconciling if we got somebody who you know we were deceptive with or didn't treat so well um perhaps embodying again narcissistic traits and it's, it's trying to find the strength again to kind of admit to those things for our own growth, for the sake of, of a relationship to grow. And then we have power, happiness, gain, love. So obviously we're looking to have happiness. We're wanting to move forward towards love, in regards to love, power. Perhaps this is about trying to, again, find our own personal power, will, strength, determination, courage um, to go towards that. Because, again, perhaps we, are, we, know, we know what we want. We know what we want to go towards. But how do we do it? How do I heal this situation? How do I admit to the things I need to admit to? How do I get out of my own way? Because again, you might be dealing with somebody who's never had to do this before. Or you're someone who's never had to do this before. This is like the grow up moment. This is like, I can't I can't go backwards once I step over this threshold of, of change within myself and, and in general. But it's a good thing, you know, and it's necessary. It's why you're here, again. Then we have surprise. Hope, frustration, sexual attraction, anxiety, and bad news. So, of course, we are fearful. That's why we're needing to gather our strength. That's why it's over here at the ten of, uh, Nine of Wands. You know, there's some fear here. You know, we're trying to be hopeful. We don't know if there's any hope in the situation because, again, who knows how long we've let things ride for. Um, there could be frustration involved even in regards to having to do this because, again, people who have spent their whole lives operating from a place of wounding, it could be aggravating even that we have to give up those ways. It's like because that's been the security blanket, that's been our protection, but it's also been the thing that's led to the demise of relationships or have held us back in regards to career. Again, it's a complete overhaul that needs to be done here within the self. And again, that could be frustrating because again, we don't want to let go of what we feel keeps us safe. That includes wearing masks, you know, again, or 
entering into relationships again for needs being met so that we're not lonely, you know, the voids being filled so that we're not lonely, needs being met so that we have roofs provided over our heads or someone to take care of us or to pay our way if we're not applying ourselves and being an equal contributor. You know, again, looking for someone to enable us in our stuff, in our karma, in our wounding. You know, perhaps looking looking for the mother, looking for the father to, to, to give to us what we didn't give it as a child. So we're choosing partners that we're looking to have that wound again being met. And if we've, even though they always blow up in our face, these situations, they always end the same you still keep entering into them because it's all you know and because you haven't addressed what needs to be addressed within you you keep attracting it to you that's the universe saying okay we're going to bring you another another uh project partner you know just like in school you get assigned you know partners to to work on a project together and if you fail you got to repeat it again maybe a new partner will help you be able to you know, manifest this or come to your whatever so you can pass this class. You know, this is kind of how it goes. But again, you know, there could be fear around that because it's it's a complete, it's, it's, even though it's freedom, we're freeing ourselves from the shackles of our wounding of our past, of our conditioning, of all the things that have held us back. But again, if it's all we've known and it's how we've engaged, and if we're like in our 40s or 50s, or of, I mean, this has been a long time of this. And anybody knows how hard it is to break a habit, even if it's a bad habit. And our own negative self-talk, again, how we view ourselves, our self-worth which again keeps getting us into these situations again it's a complete overhaul and there might be some battle within the self battling the ego to, to let that go even though it has to go because it's not serving us you know wanting here to possibly reconcile with someone here because we have a relationship feeling frustrated about it not knowing if there's any hope not knowing if, if we can should communicate with them because we are again are, are fearing rejection or whatever especially if we've behaved in a way so long and the person finally said you know what screw this i'm out of here you know again it's that releasing of control trying to control the situation so that it works in a way that makes you comfortable when you become vulnerable when you enter into things for love, it's like that fear of well, someone else now has some control. And, and there could be fear involved of losing that person. Again, when it's real, those fears can become even more real. So again, maybe some people have pushed love away. This is how they've been. Um, so there's anxiety here. There's fear that there's, you know, this person might not take them back again and just fear of change fear of letting go of things that we need to let go within ourselves now what you're thinking and feeling in regards to all of this we have spiritual so perhaps again you're kind of seeing the bigger picture of everything this is also can symbolize that you have a spiritual connection with the person that you're talking you're know, thinking about um, soulmate twin flame it's also knowing that everything happens for a reason. It's all part of your spiritual path, your journey. And then we have reconciliation. So again, somebody's looking to get back with somebody. But they're fearful. Or you're fearful of this person. As it says, you're either the dark-haired woman or maybe you're the dark-haired man. Um... Which is also somebody, again, who's in their shadow self. And all the negative things that are about the shadow self. That includes manipulation. Um, whether it's done in a sinister way. Or, again, in just a way that's... It's what you've learned. Again, it's learned behavior. It's conditioning. What love looked like to me as a child. And whatever it looked like, that's what I'm going to That's what I'm gonna embody. That's what I'm going to keep entering into. The same kind of scenarios. Imitating the, the dynamic that I saw. Um, 
So this is again perhaps fear. You know, again, if you're the dark haired man to get over your fears, your shadow self, your anxiety, your, your, all the stuff that's holding you back so that you can reconcile. Because again, you might realize the spiritual connection, the spiritual reason for it all, whatever it is. And then you have the brown haired woman. So again, it's either you or the person that you're dealing with. But again, somebody is looking to reconcile or wanting to. But there's fear, hesitancy, again, because it requires change, internal and external. And then we have talent. So this is trying to figure out a way how to do what we got to do, how to say what we got to say, revealing secrets or not being afraid of the unknown. Again, trying to get our courage to, to do what we got to do so that we can have abundance in this situation, in our life, have all, all the things that we want, Ten of Cups, not being afraid to take a leap of faith, you know, be the fool, ready to embark on a new journey. Think of what we want long term. We want good fortune. We want good things. We want things to turn around for the better. You know, we want to overcome our challenges in life, our challenge in regards to this relationship, or knowing that we have to, again, put in some efforts, perhaps more so than we ever have before, and that involves mostly the self. Again, getting out of our own way, stop doing the things that we've done in the past that have led us to the same situations over and over again, recognizing those patterns and nipping them in the bud. You know, being up for the challenge even within yourself. And and again, it only come it all comes down to self-love. If I love myself, I'm gonna put in the effort to heal what I need to heal. So I stop fucking up my life. So I stop ruining relationships, so I start hurting people and hurting myself. It all comes down to self-love, wanting the best for ourselves, taking the time to to invest in our mental health, our emotional health, our physical health, like all of it stems from how do I feel about me? And if I feel like shit about myself, if I lack self-love and self-respect, then I'm going to keep entering into unhappy situations. I'm going to keep self-sabotaging good situations. I'm going to keep, you know, slacking off and blaming the world again. It's all about the self, this whole journey, regardless of who comes and goes in your life. It all is about you. And at the end of your journey, you're a different person than you were in your teens and 20s and childhood and whatever, hopefully. Hopefully you evolve to a higher state of awareness. If you haven't, if you spent your whole life in the same karma, then you will come back and you will have to repeat it all over again. Same soul group, everyone playing different roles, but the lessons will be the same because that needs to you need to pass that class in order to graduate and that's what it says you you, you want to try to get it as right as you can the first time <laughs> and then we have communication obviously communication needs to happen this fear of communication we have stop look and listen this reminds me of pay attention for the red flags it's kind of like you know Heed the guidance, heed the messages, heed the intuition, you know, pay attention to what you need to pay attention to in order to change your situation. And a lot of that involves truth, being truthful, especially if you've been a person who's been manipulative in the past or dealing with someone who was. Living in your truth, accepting nothing but the truth, realizing truths, expressing, communicating truths. Knowing that that needs to be done in order to move forward in a positive way. And we have friend. We also have the lesson. So obviously there's a lesson that was learned here. A lesson that needs to be learned. And, you know, we're needing to tell the truth or accept nothing but the truth or realize the truth. In regards to a relationship that we had with someone. Friend can symbolize a romantic relationship, 
a friends with benefits situation, a friend that we want to turn into a relationship, well, however it is, because even if you're involved with someone, that person is like your best friend. So friend could be fall into any of those categories or descriptions. And then we have patience, you know, perhaps we, we, we're hoping that over time, this situation can heal, you know, but again, we're needing to communicate. <laughs> This is also wondering if maybe it's been, it's too late. Maybe we've waited too long. This, this is where the fears are coming in. So we're trying to pay attention to the red flags. Like you better get a hustle on so you don't miss an opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Scorpio. And what challenge or lesson or a challenge or obstacle that you might be needing to deal with in order to progress forward. In a positive manner, we have the phoenix, but that was in the challenge position. And then we have the prison waif in the ally position. So let us see. When the phoenix challenges you, it's really just a gentle reminder to let go and let what doesn't work fall away. Clean it up. Maybe you're not allowing things to change because you're more comfortable with the familiar, even if you know that it's not the best you could create for yourself. Fear of change is a crippling experience as it works against nature itself. The task at the end is to allow for an ending, as it's timely and right that you do so for the highest good of all. In surrendering to the fundamental purposeful change, you will most definitely find yourself in better circumstances. The action needed is allowing. A rebirth is assured. And that's what I said. We got to let all that stuff fall away, push ourselves into a better future, a better destiny, and destiny is created by the choices that we make. Choose yourself this time around. Choose to love yourself, to put in that effort, to heal what you need to heal, to fix your life. Um, basically, you know, it's time to let, let things go. It's time to, to get out of your own way and don't let pride or ego you know, and pride could also be, well, I, I won't admit to the stuff that I did. And I be, it's better for me to hold on to that mask, even if that means I'm going to lose this person. Because they're looking for the truth from me. They're looking for nothing but the truth. And if I lie to cover up my lies, if I'm still trying to hide my deceptions, if I'm whatever, that is not going to work anymore, at least in regards to this person. You might find a new karmic partner that you can pull the wool over their eyes and enable you and keep you in a situation. But this person who woke up is not going to engage in that karma anymore because they've shed their karma. They've learned their lesson. And if you can learn yours, there might be a possibility for reconciliation. Otherwise, if we're trying to still hold on to the falseness, it's not going to serve us. And that's what they're saying is, is that's an aspect of you that needs to be addressed. Because, you know, again, that fear of letting that go is, is just keeping you stuck. Again, we will fight to hold on to those defense mechanisms that stem from childhood, even though they, they ruin our life. And by doing so, again, we'll have a rebirth. Prison Waif. When the prison waif arrives in his realm as your ally, he comes to remind you of the law of paradoxal intent. Your own self-sabotaging thoughts and hidden beliefs are in fact preventing you from your highest good. You might believe that you're doing all you can to manifest your reality, but perhaps you're giving into the thoughts such as the following. I can't do this. I'm unworthy. I'll fail, so why try? I don't deserve this. I'm unlovable. In fact, you're locked in a prison of your own making. That's good news because it means you have the key to let yourself out. This is a sign that you need to spend some time with yourself addressing those beliefs that counter your hard work to get ahead. You can change them if you want to. You don't want to stay in prison, do you? Take inventory of your thoughts. Let yourself out of jail and spend a few minutes outdoors in gratitude. It's time to let the sun shine in. And that's kind of what we've been talking about. This is all about rebirth. And it all comes down to self-love. I love myself more than I love my pride. I love myself more than I love my ego. I love myself more than I love this wounding that I've been living in 
my whole life that has caused havoc in my life and in my relationships. And perhaps I didn't recognize that. Perhaps I didn't understand the bigger picture of it all. But again, it's coming into those moments. There's your spirit guides, the universe, they're rooting for you to do that. Because they know why you came here. They know what fated events are on your, your journey. And, and how you respond to them is what leads you down your destined path. Whether that's a path of continuous karma, because we're not learning, we're not figuring out the common denominator is us. Or it's us realizing that and moving into a much better future for ourselves. You know, again, the choice is always yours. But the ego, the ego will be fighting you on that to the death. <laughs> you know, think of it like the, the, the good devil, like in the cartoons, when you had the good devil and the bad devil on the shoulder. You got the good one saying, no, release that. Let go of fear. And then you go, no, don't do that. Because if we do that, we're going to get hurt. Well, if we don't, you know what I mean? That's what it is. You're always battling the light and dark aspects of the self. Um, the higher message involved here for you is inner child. I nurture the child within me through playfulness and self-care. Like I said, this all comes from childhood wounding, psychology, how we think about ourselves, how we think about love and relationships, how we think about the world that we live in. All of it stems from conditioning. Family conditioning, society conditioning, our own conditioning through experience. Again, because... Living life, you go through different stuff, and your viewpoints change. Um, you go from being young and naive and optimistic to becoming a little, perhaps, jaded and whatever. Again, it's all experience, but it's also realizing that each experience is here to teach us something. So nurture that inner child. Find out. Connect the dots. Do, do an inventory again of your life. Recognize the patterns. Recognize your role in each situation that turned out the way that it did. And you'll see again that there's something in here that needs to be healed. Love yourself enough to do that. And they say to be strong. I pull myself up and do what needs to be done. Have the courage and the strength, the will and the determination again to heal yourself. So that you can get yourself out of prison. And you can move towards... Love, happiness, fulfillment in your life. And then we have marriage. I make a commitment to a healthy relationship with God, myself, and my partner. Again, this is about being committed to the self, being committed to your soul's journey, your soul's evolution. It's also some of you might be looking, this might involve marriage somewhat. Whether it's a spiritual union, coming together with your twin flame, it could be, uh, or your soulmate that's going to be your life partner. Um, perhaps you're looking, you're wanting to marry this person now. You're wanting this Ten of Cups. You realize your mistakes. You're, you know, trying to find your way back. This, again, is also just about being committed to yourself, your own journey. Um, and then we have quiet. I go into peaceful silence and I listen. So this is, again, doing the reflective work. And, and realizing what needs to change, what needs to be done in order to be committed or to commit to somebody that you're wanting to commit with. And then we have children. My heart is filled with love for children, which creates miracles and positive change for them and me. This could, again, be reiterating the inner child, childhood wounds that's playing a part in, in, in stuff. So we're needing to see that. Children can also mean actual children. Um, you know, you might be married to this person. You might have children with this person. Children also symbolizes new beginnings. And then we have God. I step out of the way and surrender any need for control in order to make room for God's healing love to flow through me in this situation. So if we're talking about new beginnings, it's about having faith. You know, getting out of our own way. Allowing the universe to help guide us taking the guidance that they're giving us in regards to self-reflecting, in regards to our wounding, in regards to all the stuff that's holding us back. You know, and again, and having faith that everything happens for a reason, and the reason is for your soul's growth and evolution. The good, the bad, 
the ugly, whatever it is. Now, the advice for you is let your friends help you ask for and, and accept support from, help, from others. You may be needing assistance to help you embark on a journey if you're needing to travel or whatever it is. Don't be so prideful that you're afraid to ask for help by letting others see that you fucked up and you might need some help to get out of your current situation. Again, don't let the pride keep you stuck, even as far as allowing your friends to, to see your vulnerability, that you're not perfect, that you don't make perfect choices, and that you might need some help to help you start on your new path. As they're saying for you to free yourself, it's time to take back control of your life. So whatever situation you're in, you're needing to free yourself from that. Free yourself from yourself. Learning again to get out of your own way. Take back control of your life. Put in the work and effort that's needed for you to have better. Because we got some codependency issues. Addictions are affecting your romantic life. Addicted to karmic codependent situations, again, because we're being somewhat lazy in, 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 in working on ourselves. So we look for to find comfort in others entering into already made situations. Again, beware of the hobo sexual, the person who enters into relationships to prevent themselves from being homeless. Again, because they're not putting the work and effort in themselves. They always want to blame the world. It's always woe is me. And so they're looking for attention. They're looking for someone, again, to pacify their wounds, to, to meet, get their needs met. But they're not applying themselves when they're in the relationship. They're not doing their part. It's not an equal give and take. It's, again, just mooching off of the back of the benefits and not giving into a situation. Again, because maybe our heart isn't in it. Maybe we're just with the person because, hey, they're okay. To treat me all right, my needs are being met, but there's no emotional fulfillment there because it's not based in real love. And this is what we're wanting to go towards. Perhaps we realize we had that with someone else and we're wanting to go back to that. This is all about, again, staying in our, our, our tendencies, self-sabotaging tendencies. You know, again, it's all stemming from childhood. We're letting our fears, our defense mechanisms, our everything, and being addicted to those same old ways of being that have gotten us into the scenarios that we've been in in all of our lives, and we're needing to address that. Free thyself from codependent tendencies. Learn to be independent, to stand on your own, to become empowered, and not dependent on another for survival, for pacifying our wounds, whatever it is. And healing family issues, your love life benefits if you forgive your parents. This could also mean healing this family, whoever you're looking to reunite with, your soul partner, your soul mate who might be your life partner, your twin flame, whatever it is. It's healing this family. It's also, again, realizing that stuff that stems from childhood. And now we can say, oh, no, I, now I knew it. It's my parents' fault that I'm all jacked up. <laughs> you know, again, you had no control over that as a child. But you have control over that for an adult. You can't blame 40 years ago or 20 years ago for what is your situation now. It's all, it's about accountability for our own choices and actions. And if we made those choices and actions because of our conditioning as children, because of our wounding as children, it's time to heal that and, and, and forgive your parents because, again, they played a role. They played a role, and they came in with their own stuff that they had to learn and grow from. So it's about having, seeing things again from the bigger perspective, and that will help to free you from the chains of the past. And then we have unrequited love. There's not enough attraction or chemistry to keep this relationship going. Now, that could mean if you want something, if you want somebody back, you're going to have to make the effort. You're going to have to show your love in order to get them to show their love. It's, it's like there needs to be effort made here because this person is your soulmate. So 
If you want to go towards love, if you want to heal a situation, you better drop that pride. You better do that self-reflective work. You better heal thyself so that you're asking to re-enter into something with some, give that person the confidence to, to, to give you another chance if this is that situation because they're seeing that you have the ability to self-reflect, that you know what needs to be healed within you so that you'd be a, 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 you know, they consider it a wise investment because if you're coming back the same old, same old, nobody's going to want to reinvest, especially someone who's already healed. You can't go backwards. They've already learned that lesson and they're not going to enter into it with somebody who hasn't learned it. So learn the lesson, heal thyself, express your love because this is your soulmate, possible life partner, possible twin flame. You know, marriage could be in the future for you both. You know, but again, it's about being committed and, and a need to free yourself from all the things that are holding you back. And on that note, my lovelies, I send you love and light. I wish you healing and luck in regards to this and anything else that you might be going through. Please like, subscribe, and share if you haven't already. And until next time, take care. Bye-bye.